सो इफ वी स्टार्ट बाय लुकिंग एट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ नेविगेशन इटसेल्फ इट सेज दैट नेविगेशन इज द फंडामेंटल प्रोसेस वेयर एन एयरक्राफ्ट इज डायरेक्टेड फ्रॉम वन पोजिशन टू द अदर राइट नाउ बाय द वर्च्यू ऑफ इट्स डेफिनेशन इट सेल्फ वी विल हैव टू मैंशन or requires some system to mention this point of starting and the point of termination or the starting point and the end point right i'll have to define them how do i position them okay or how do i create a position reference system for these two points in order to navigate from point a to point b so in order to understand this let's dial back the clock a little If you guys remember, in school we studied something known as the coordinate system, right? We studied about the Cartesian plane. Why did we study that? Because it gave us an idea of how can we position and you know describe a point in a two D space in a two dimensional sheet of paper. How can we position a point? Right? A point could be anywhere on the paper, but how do we identify or reference that point? In order to reference it. we were taught to reference it against two axes right we used to have something known as the x axis and we used to have something known as the y axis right and we used to have something known as the origin where everything starts so in order to point out this some point alpha what i used to do was i used to tell them okay you know you need to travel so and so distance horizontally right to reach here and then you need to travel some distance vertically right in order to reach here and wherever they is intersect that is your point which is x comma y so now a point which was just any other random point on a piece of paper now suddenly because i created these two reference axes it became easier for me to position it so if now i were to describe some point b all i got to tell you is the x to comma y to coordinates for that point and then you'll be able to navigate from point a to b it's that simple right so now in order to navigate on the surface of earth or you know in general in order to navigate i need to create a similar position referencing system right and how do i do this i do this exactly how we did it for a 2d plane we superimpose the same x and y axis onto the surface of the earth just that we have given different names to each of these axes and its construction is slightly different so let's look into that right so we have something known as the latitudes now latitudes essentially are just these horizontal lines right which go all the way up right these horizontal lines which are parallel to the equator are known as latitudes how do we construct them okay uh, what is the meaning of these latitudes what does that 45 degree 40 degree north you know 20 degree north 25 degree north what does it mean so by definition what it means is it is the angle that is subtended at the center of the earth so if you look here if you look at this as the center of the earth right c as the center of the earth there a latitude is a line joining all the points which lie at an 10 degree angle above the equator right so if i were to look at it here right a 40 degree north latitude is nothing but it is connecting all the points which lie exactly 40 degrees above the equator right so by definition what is a latitude right a latitude is the angle subtended at the center by whom by the shorter arc of the meridian by the shorter arc of the meridian right if you notice is in this line representing a meridian okay we'll come down to what the definition of a meridian is right but it is just the shorter arc measured 
starting from the equator to the point that I want to measure at and I just see the angle it makes at the center of the earth right basically how high is it above the equator and I join places which are equally high above the equator with a straight line this circular straight line circular line rather or a straight line on the surface is known as a latitude right so let's say I talk about 35 degree latitude or let's say I talk about 20 degree latitude here okay so a 20 degree latitude means all these points which are on the 20 degree latitude are exactly 20 degrees when I measure it referencing from the equator starting from the equator when I start measuring it these are as high as 20 degrees similarly somebody at a 40 degree latitude is 40 degrees above the equator when I'm measuring it at the center of the earth right that is your definition of latitudes that is how I define latitude so you can observe this picture for a second and this picture will explain you everything you need to know about latitudes right so I have zero degree latitudes which is basically my equator I travel 10 degrees up if I subtend an angle of 10 degrees at the center right I will basically reach my 10 degree latitude all these points will be at 10 degrees all of these okay think of it that I'm standing at the center of the earth and I'm seeing how high do I have to look to reach this point so I raise my head up by 10 degrees my eyesight will be looking at the 10 degree latitude now I just rotate standing at the same center point I rotate 360 degrees I will have looked at 10 degrees above my eye line I would have looked at a 10 degree latitude similarly if I look at if I raise my head up by 20 degrees and I rotate 360 degrees I would have looked at the 20 degree latitude similarly a 30 degree latitude a 40 degree latitude so on so forth so this is this is the angle subtended by the shorter arc of the meridian what does this mean you know let me take a moment to explain you this so in any circle that you draw right in any circle that you draw sorry that's not a great circle in any circle that we draw right for any angle that i subtend at the center right this is called as the minor arc and the remaining is called as a major arc right the whatever remaining part is it's called as a major arc fine so I have a minor arc and I have a major arc so now I say ki, okay if there is an equator let's say I cut the earth vertically okay let's say this is the earth and I'm looking at a side view of the earth okay and I've cut the earth vertically in half passing through the center okay so now I'm looking at what I am looking at the equator something like this right this is my equator this is my equator line right now I want to measure the latitude of some point a so what do I do I draw a line joining a then by definition of latitude what does it say it is the angle subtended at the center of the earth by the shorter arc of the meridian measured between the point that is to be identified in our case which is alpha and the equator right isn't this the equator line so I start measuring from the equator and I go upwards to whichever point I want to identify and I see what angle is it making at the center of the earth right and this is the shorter arc of the meridian meridians are lines which run from the northern uh, north pole to the south pole these are straight lines which run from north pole to the south pole we'll talk more about that in a second similarly if I'm going below it I'll see how what is the angle again subtended by this point and the equator when I measure this shorter arc what angle is it subtending here that will give me my latitude which is why I have 145 degrees in north also and I have a 45 degrees in south also because both of them start from the equator considering equator as zero degrees right because I'm not raising my head if I'm standing at the center of the earth if I'm looking straight at zero degrees eye line I'm going to see the equator if I raise my head up I look at the northern hemisphere if I dip my head below the equator I look at the southern hemisphere 
so i hope this explains you about what latitudes are and how do we you know design them similarly a very simple and a very similar logic is how we design our longitudes so if you look at it here our longitudes by definition are the shorter arc okay the angle subtended by the shorter arc so let me write it uh, a longitude is the angle subtended at the center by the shorter arc of the equator okay so here we are measuring the shorter arc of the equator what does that mean that means that whatever our point is okay like our starting point for latitudes was the equator in the case of longitudes our starting point is this one line right which we call as the greenwich um greenwich mean meridian or we call it the prime meridian it has multiple names so we reference our zero there and we start measuring from there to the point that has to be identified right but what am i making this arc on i'm making this arc along the equator right and i'm seeing what angle does it subtend at the center of the earth whatever angle this theta is is basically my longitude so i mark all these angular points on my equator and then i do nothing i just take my north pole pass it through these points and then drag it down all the way to the south pole right so my longitudes are essentially again by definition the angle subtended at the center of the earth by the shorter arc of the equator right so if you look at this diagram here right here my equator and the point that has to be identified right along my equator's shorter arc i am subtending an angle of only 10 degrees similarly here i'm subtending 20 then i'm subtending 30 40 so the maximum angle i can subtend at the equator for the shorter arc is a maximum of 180 degrees right whereas for the latitudes the highest i could see up is 90 degrees because i am making full circles right so if in case any one of you is confused as to why do we have latitudes going up only from 0 to 90 and not from 0 to 180 because i'm making complete circles once i reach here once i reach this point and let's say i start going back down i am basically coming back to the same 80 degree circle the same 70 degree circle the same 60 degree circle right so there's no point naming them more that's not the case with longitudes though right for longitudes what is happening i have to go all the way around the circumference of the you know of the earth or along the equator to measure a maximum angle of 180 thereafter it again starts reducing why is that because the prime meridian right along with its anti meridian separates the earth into western and eastern hemispheres you'll see it here right so my western and eastern hemispheres have longitudes going from 0 degrees to 180 degrees and then again 180 degrees to 0 degrees right which is why i have 170 degree east also and i have 170 degree west also right so again just quickly summing it up your longitudes are the angles subtended at the center of the earth right it's the angle subtended at the center of the earth by the shorter arc of the equator where is the shorter arc measured from it is starting from the prime meridian up until the point that has to be measured right along what along the equator hence the angle subtended at the center of the earth by the shorter arc of the equator measured from the prime meridian to the point that has to be identified then what do i do once i mark all these distances and points on my equator i merely just connect my north pole to these points again dragging them to the south pole right so i can say in other words i can say that my longitudes 
originate at the north pole come to the equator and then again converge at the south pole right aren't they they start at the north pole they continue they reach the equator and then they further you know converge so my longitudes which are there going towards the north or going towards the south my longitudes converge they get closer to each other similarly the length of the latitudes if i were to you know measure the circumference of each latitude the circumference of each latitude is going on decreasing up until i reach 90 degrees latitude which is essentially just going to be a point which is going to be my north pole it's just going to be a point it's not going to have any length the circle is not going to have any circumference 80 degrees north or 80 degrees south yeah they're going to have some circumference right fine so this explains what latitudes are and what longitudes are now let's understand something let's talk about geodetic and geo centric okay these are two terms so you'll hear these terms often okay you have geocentric and then you have something that's known as geodative or geographic meaning the same thing okay you have geocentric and you have geodative or geographic what are these now these are basically two kinds of centers why is it important it is important because if you see the definition of latitudes and longitudes everywhere i have mentioned that it is the angle at the center right so there is some center being defined now the thing is the problem with this is why do i have these two different terms is because the earth i have considered it to be a sphere i have considered it to be a sphere with one center but in actual it is a slightly elliptical body it's a 3d ellipse right or what we call as an oblate spheroid so it does not necessarily have the same center right it doesn't need to have that so what is geodative and geocentric geocentric is what we understand very simple it is basically the center of the earth when we have assumed the earth to be a circle right so let me just draw it for you so let's say that the earth we have assumed the earth to be a sphere then the point at the center of it right this is called the geocentric uh, geocentric center geocentric center and any latitudes which we are measuring from here or longitudes which we are measuring you know if we are considering this as the center then they are termed as geocentric latitudes geocentric latitudes or longitudes whatever it is then when i actually consider the actual shape of the earth right since the earth is an actual oblate spheroid a different definition is used here i draw the earth as an oblate spheroid right and what i say is i'm like take any point that you want to identify take a point a take any point and we draw a tangent to that point right we draw a tangent to that point at the same time we also draw you know the intersection or the center okay we just draw the minor and major axes this is just for reference right fine so this is nothing but the plane of the equator plane of the equator imagine that the equator was a big round disk right this is that plane of the equator equator is just the circumference of that big disk think of it like that right it is just the line we are seeing just the border of that disk let's say it is actually cutting the earth you know horizontally into two halves two hemispheres is what we call it right so this is a plane of the equator then whatever this tangent is i draw a normal from that tangent right i draw a line perpendicular to that and wherever it intersects with my equatorial plane 
I name that as my center. This is known as geodative or geographic center. All right. So again, whatever point has to be identified, you draw a tangent to it, and you draw a normal to that tangent. Wherever it intersects the equatorial plane, that point becomes my geodative or geographic center. Now, in your navigational charts, right? In your navigational charts, we consider this as our actual center. We consider geodative and geographic center, right? Because it's more accurate. Because we here we've considered the actual shape of the Earth. At least try to assume the actual shape of the Earth, right? Now, if this was the center. or if this was the geographic center right sorry geocentric center if this was the geocentric center and this was the geodative center the maximum difference you'll get between both of these at a given latitude right you'll get some difference in both the angles of course this is a larger angle for the same point this is a shallower angle for the same point right so the max difference you'll get is going to be at 45 degrees north or 45 degrees south okay and the difference is what the difference is going to be of 11 degrees and 6 minutes okay sorry i stand corrected it's going to be 11 11.6 minutes not 11 degrees 6 minutes it's going to be 11.6 minutes of difference that you get basically this angle that you measure is going to be 11.6 right then some other properties which you need to understand is that both your geodative or geographic whatever you call it and your geocentric these both will coincide at two places at the equator and at the poles right if i measure from my poles my both centers will coincide if i measure at the equator again my both centers will coincide right they are bound to fine so this explains what geodative and geographic centers are right for us in navigational charts we use the geodative or the geographic center why because it's a more accurate representation of the oblate spheroid Now if you recall from our last class we spoke something about great circles right what were great circles great circles were circles on the surface of the earth right which were what which used to represent the shortest distance between any two points right and the disk or the plane of this great circle used to pass through the center of the earth So think of it like this was the largest circle you could have on a sphere, right? Anything smaller than the great circle is called as a small circle, and it is not going to pass through the center of the earth, right? Logically, if you just take a moment and think about a sphere, the largest circle you can have drawn on the surface will have to pass through the center. There is no way you can draw a the biggest circle on the surface of the sphere. without it passing through the center and this circle was what we called as a great circle right fine so keep this aside for a second right make this as equation 1 just keep it in your head let's talk quickly about the definition of a nautical mile okay what is a nautical mile so a nautical mile is defined as if i consider the earth right if i consider the earth as a sphere a nautical mile is the length of the arc the length of the arc subtended at the center or the length of the arc which is measured on the surface of the earth which subtends a angle of 1 minute at the center of the earth what does this mean what is 1 minute 
so usually we are very used to following the decimal system right a decimal system is usually with changes in hundreds which is why we have 0.9 then makes 1 then we have 1.9 the next number which comes is 2 so we function in multiples of tens and hundreds and thousands we usually function like that in decimals but in navigation in navigation we use something that is known as the All right, we use the sexagesimal system. What is the sexagesimal system? It says that every degree is made up of sixty minutes. Each minute is made up of sixty seconds. Right? How do I arrive at the definition of one degree? The definition of one degree is that if I take any circle. Okay, if I take any circle and I divide it into three sixty parts, ठीक है, I divide this circle into three hundred and sixty parts, then one by three sixtieth of this part, right? One by three sixtieth of this circle. That's one of three sixty slices that I've cut, like pizza slices. I've cut the circle into three sixty parts. Then each part. If I take one of them, it's going to give me an angle of one degree. That is why a circle has three sixty degrees, right? This is what this sex decimal system talks about. So, coming back to definition of a nautical mile, definition of a nautical mile says it is the length, the length of the arc on the surface of the earth that subtends who the arc that subtends 1 minute at the center okay so understand this the it is the length of the arc on the surface of the earth that subtends a 1 minute angle at the center of the earth and i'm considering all of this in this whole process i'm considering for my purpose that the earth is a sphere it's a proper sphere so so if it subtends 1 minute then this is equal to 1 nautical mile on the surface if let's say the line the arc were to subtend 2 minutes right then the length of this line would have been what would have been Two nautical miles, right? So, very quickly, just think about it and tell me what happens or what is the length if I travel up? Okay, if I travel up, up until one degree north, then how much distance have I covered vertically along the surface of the earth? How much have I covered if I have travelled from the equator vertically to one degree north? Okay, so what is it? How much have I? How much distance have I covered? I would have covered sixty nautical miles, isn't it? Why? Because one degree is equal to sixty minutes, and if one minute at the center is equal to one nautical mile, then sixty minutes is definitely equal to sixty nautical miles, isn't it? fine fine now something very quickly which i want you guys to remember and understand that when i'm drawing or when i'm considering this definition of a nautical mile i am essentially mentioning a great circle isn't it right how else which other line will subtend an angle at the center it will have to be a great circle right so connect it and understand it with the principle of great circle which is why i said consider the great circle to be equation number 1 right so i can say that any it is the length of the arc of the great circle which subtends 
a one minute angle at the center of the earth then the length of that arc is going to be one nautical mile if i subtend one minute angle at the center length of the arc is one nautical mile if i subtend three minutes at the center the length of the arc along the great circle is going to be three nautical miles all right i hope we've understood everything so far right fine so let's quickly talk about some other terms right let's quickly talk about what meridians are okay so now these are known as meridians right these are lines which originate from the north pole and terminate at the south pole okay the first and the most primary meridian is called as the zero degree meridian or the zero degree longitude all right which is known as the prime meridian all meridians are longitudes right and they are interchangeable okay each meridian along with its exact 180 degree opposite meridian right and what do we call this opposite meridian we call this the anti meridian right so 0 degree meridian is going to have its opposite meridian at 180 degrees right so each meridian along with its anti meridian so meridian plus its anti meridian will give you a great circle right in other words a meridian is nothing but a semi great circle it's half of a great circle right it's a semi great circle all right it runs in the north south direction okay it gives you angular displacements to the east or to the west of your prime meridian tells you how far off in degrees are you from the prime meridian where is this angle being made it's being made at the center the latitude or the longitude sorry cross the equator at right angles all right then they are equal in length and they are halves of great circles these are some very basic properties of meridians all right meridians converge at the poles all right they originate from either of the poles they are further most away from each other at the equator okay this is just by virtue of the shape you can just observe this similarly you have you have properties of latitudes also right so latitudes you have all the latitudes which are known as parallels parallels of latitudes right these all are lines which are parallel to the equator if you look at it here these are just lines which are parallel to the equator right so these all are known as parallel of latitudes each one of them is known as a parallel of latitude these are all parallels So now quickly let's understand something else, right? There's a term known as a rumb line. Okay, what's a rumb line? Before understanding that, we need to understand how does a great circle visually look on the surface of the Earth, and what problems or what challenges does it pose, right? In practical flying. So let's quickly look at this. All right. So let's say, let's say, okay, this. globe gives you a very good representation of what latitudes and longitudes are so let's say i were to start from some point here all right in india and let's say i were to fly in a straight line all the way to some point up here right because it's a straight line on the surface of the earth what is this essentially this is a great circle it is just a segment of that whole big great circle that is there which exists right and like i said great circles are what they appear to be straight lines on the surface of the earth right if you look at it from a human perspective for you it appears to be a straight line right because you're seeing a very small segment of a very large circle right fine so now there is a problem with this i think some of you might be able to see it but let's talk about this so if you observe if you observe let's say i were to take a plane and i were to fly along this longitude uh, sorry this great circle line that i've drawn you know let's say this is point a and i'm going all the way to point b and i want to fly from a to b 
but i want to fly the shortest distance because let's say you know i'm i'm extremely stingy about the fuel so i want to fly in the shortest distance i want to be there asap so i take the great circle route where's the problem with the great circle route now you need to understand how do we correspond or how do we reference to directions for us directions are which along our longitudes okay so always remember this for us our north is always our true north rather you'll understand what the term true north means for now just understand it as north for us our north is wherever our longitude is pointing okay our longitude in the direction our along our longitude which will take us to the north pole is known as our north so now if you observe when i'm departing right when i'm departing i could be departing with a certain heading all right i was departing let's say i was departing with a heading of let's say 300 all right 300 a uh, heading pe main nikal raha hu as in when i go forward you see my reference because my meridians converge or my longitudes converge right my angle gradually what happens it increases right ultimately if you look at it here at this point what did i tell you for you your north is always going to be along this longitude right because these points will take you to your north isn't it let's say your north pole is somewhere here it is along these lines that will take you to your north pole so for you your north is in this direction but now your heading has now suddenly increased right your heading has increased or whatever this angle you're making with the north it has decreased rather right you came 300 here you're probably flying 270 degrees now why your track is absolutely straight your north itself has gradually kept shifting right if i were to draw a parallel of this line okay the line i'm going to draw in purple now if i were to draw a line parallel to this line right here it would look something like this right when i started off my north was in this direction but when i ended up at b my north is finally pointing in this direction so you see this angle which has got created now this angle is what adds to our heading okay giving us an error so flying along a great circle i will never fly along a constant heading my heading will continuously change right and this is a problem of why i sometimes you know it's it's less prefer to fly along a great circle because you're not going to fly a constant heading all right so flying along a great circle you do not fly a constant heading you've seen why you do not fly a constant heading so now let's take a moment and talk about rumb lines right now rumb lines rumb lines are lines which which cut the meridians at equal angle this is the definition of a rumb line it is an imaginary line drawn on the surface of the earth that cuts all meridians at equal angles so so let's say that i have this okay cut at equal angles matlab whatever my meridian is let's say i'm cutting it at 45 degrees theek hai then again my meridian i cut it at a 45 degree angle 45 same as 45 my next meridian again i cut it at 45 my next meridian again i cut it at 45 so what has happened do you see it is probably not the shortest path it is still a curved path now right on the globe itself it's coming out as a curved path it's no longer a straight line a straight line a straight line between these two points is this right let me draw it in different color a straight line is this this is your great circle whereas this is your rumb line okay so rumb line is preferred because now the pilot does not have to continuously check his heading the pilot just has to decide a certain heading and fly that heading right and he'll continuously he'll he'll end up flying in a curved path but he will reach his destination the only drawback is that the rumb line track is not the shortest track because it's not a straight line on the globe right it is a curved line 
right so what are the properties of a rumb line a rumb line cuts all meridians at an equal angle right each of these angles is the same okay whatever it was making at the meridians is the same a great example of a rumb line is basically each of these latitudes each of this latitude is a rumb line why because they are parallels of the equator so each of this latitude cuts the longitude at a 90 degree angle right if you observe each one cuts this at 90 degree angles so all parallels of latitudes are rumb lines all parallels all parallels of latitudes are rumb lines right simple as that because the only criteria it has it should make equal angles with the meridian now an example of something which gives you which is both a rumb line and a great circle right there's only one of them which is known as the equator an equator is the largest circle you can draw on the surface of the earth which passes through the center and which also divides the earth into two halves which is the basic requirements to be called a great circle but it is also a rumb line because it cuts all the meridians at 90 degrees right that is how it is if you look at it here okay if you look at it on the actual globe you'll see each one of these angles is 90 degrees the thick solid yellow line you're trying to look at that at the equator right each one of this cuts the meridians at 90 degrees and hence this is a rumb line right you see it is also says this term called as anti meridian the anti meridian is nothing but 180 degrees and the thick line is called as a prime meridian right so when you look at the globe from top you'll see the prime meridian you'll see its anti meridian you'll see the small circle which is an arctic circle you'll see the equator and now we've spoken about rumb line great circles latitudes longitudes so in our next class we'll be talking about how do we calculate distances along great circle and how do we calculate distances along rumb lines i'll see you in the next class so hey guys if these videos have been helping you out and if they have helped you understand the concept which underlies general navigation make sure to subscribe to the channel and to drop a like if you have any other doubts make sure to comment too i'll keep it honest with you guys the reason i want you to subscribe is so that i get an idea of how many people are consuming this content and if there is demand for this content out there you subscribing will mean a lot to me since it gives me that little motivation that i need to put in in order to put these videos out i'm removing time from my schedule to make these videos for you guys so make sure you drop that subscribe and show your support in return moreover going further the qr code you see on your screen takes you back and links it to the notes that you can refer to understand the subject and also will provide you the google forms on which you can test yourself on the topic make sure to check it out